A very good evening and welcome to this week's first edition of Primetime News with me, Selima Shimwefeleni. In our lead story tonight, the fish rot scandal, which saw the country's marine resources stolen at an industrial scale, has bruised the ruling party's image. This is according to veteran Swapo politician Libertina Amadila in an interview with the Namibia Press Agency recently. The party Swapo is not the first time that we have problems in the party. Mm. This time maybe not just tribal problems, they have been not, we wouldn't call our problems tribal problems when we started. There was always somebody who wanted to take over from present leadership. And um, it's not the first time we had problems. We had problems in the struggle, where sometimes things happened in such a way that you didn't even trust your own shadow. I want this fish rot story finished and go, because that story has destroyed our names as a party. And we are not involved in these things. Specific people are involved. Individuals are involved. Let's deal with the individuals who are involved, but not, don't, and not involve the party. It's not the party. They, yes, they were members of different parties, but they, they did these things on their own individual basis. They didn't do it on behalf of the party. So I want that fish story to, I, I'm, I'm told it's coming now in April. Yeah, the case. Yeah, the case. Yeah, the so I pray that this case can finish by, by, by next year latest so that we can clean up clean up sweep those comrades you have been what are you thinking ask the comrade you you know you are coming from what do you think the comrade will tell us ah maybe whatever and then from we take it from there and we are going to make sure that we rebuild this party this is a great party this is the party which liberated this country during difficult times so we are not going to throw away our party Thousands flocked to farm Shanksverd in the Ovitoto district, some 50 kilometers east of Okahanja, to bury historian and chronicler of the Ovaherero history, Alexander Yaripovandu Kaputu. Our reporter Edward Mumbu Jr. and cameraman Perirwa Kuruhama compiled this report. Remembering the late Alexander Yarimbovandu Kaputu on the sidelines of the official state funeral accord to Kaputu by the Namibian government on Saturday, Deputy Minister of International Relations Janali Matundu described his departure as an incalculable loss. At the official funeral, presidential spokesperson Alfredo Hengari finds solace in the fact that President Hage Gengop recognized Kaputu's immense contribution to national building, oral history and culture. The ceremony, uh spoke to a man of traditions, uh, but also a man who uh, contributed immensely to nation building and uh, the presence of uh, the state funeral is clear testimony to uh, his uh, outstanding deeds as a human being. While alive, Caputo made crystal clear that he should be buried on farm Schenkenswaren next to great-grand-aunt Mikal Tauhuku, who died in 1989. Caputo died on 9 March 2021. He was 69 years. Born on 9 March 1952, Caputo retired in 2015 from the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation after three decades of service. He is lauded for having touched the hearts of many Namibians in oral literature and broadcasting at the Southwestern Africa Broadcasting Corporation and later NBC. In the weekend crime report, the police in Vintuk have opened a case of robbery with aggravating circumstances after four suspects stole more than 130,000 Namibian dollars from three outlets at the Black Chain Mall in Katatura. The Namibian police force in its weekend crime report said the suspects robbed a security guard of 83,251 Namibian dollars collected from pep stores around 10 minutes past 9 on Saturday morning. The guard's P-38 pistol service revolver was also stolen. They then stole 7,031 Namibian dollars from MTC and 44,366 Namibian dollars from Ackermans.
It is alleged that the suspects use a white polo with registration N178-508W as a getaway vehicle. No recoveries have been made so far. Another case of robbery with aggravating circumstances was reported on Saturday when four male suspects armed with firearms allegedly robbed two security guards of 756,612 Namibian dollars at Metro Wholesale in Vintuk's northern industrial area. According to the report, the incident occurred around 8.30 in the morning while the victims were busy collecting the money for banking. The suspects also managed to rob one of the guards of his service firearm. No arrests have been made yet. On a sad note, a 38-year-old man succumbed to a stab wound that was allegedly inflicted on him in the left side of the chest in the early hours of Sunday morning at Ochivarongo. Spokesperson of the Namibian police force NAMPOL in the Otazonjupa region, Inspector Maureen Beha, in an interview with the Namibia Press Agency on Sunday, said the deceased has been identified as Ranard Nabeb, a resident of Ochivarongo. It is alleged Nabeb and a 42-year-old suspect were involved in a quarrel after which a physical fight broke out between the two at the Taraka Abes informal settlement at around 1.30 in the early morning hours of Sunday. The suspect was arrested at around 20 minutes past 5 in the early morning hours on Sunday in Ochivarongo on a charge of murder. We will be back shortly after the news roundup. The Basic Income Grant Coalition of Namibia has expressed disappointment in President Dr. Hage Gengob for his stance on the Universal Basic Income Grant, which the President has said does not make sense. During a recent media briefing in Vintuk, Gengob said he is yet to be convinced as to why government should implement a Universal Basic Income Grant as the rationale around it makes no sense to him. In a media statement released on Friday, the coalition noted that for the past 18 years, they have been tirelessly and widely explaining the concept and rationale of the universal grant. The coalition argues that there are many good reasons for a universal basic income grant program, as classic welfare programs that use means test to target beneficiaries have been proven to be more expensive, wasteful and ineffective at reaching intended beneficiaries. According to the coalition, it will be administratively impossible for the government to identify vulnerable intended recipients of the basic income grant as people constantly move in and out of poverty due to the highly precarious labour market. The Business and Intellectual Property Authority, BIPA, and its stakeholders are in the process of reviewing Namibia's Copyright and Neighbouring Rights Protection Act of 1994. The revision of this act affects all musicians, authors, artists, developers and originators of creative work BIPA representative Onesmus Joseph said on Sunday during a consultation meeting held at Rundu. The absence of legislation to, for instance, protect traditional practices and traditional dances result in the creators of the genre being exploited without them benefiting. Another fundamental gap is that the current act is not accompanied by the copyright regulations that should guide how things should be done. It's time for your economics roundup. Thank you.
Stand by for your sports news. It's over to you, Shelva. Thank you, Salima. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Monday night's edition of Sport Planet. I'm Shalva Wells. Starting off with local sports. Namibia beat Guinea 2-1 in Ventuk on Sunday in an African Cup of Nations AFCON qualifier match. Namibia failed to qualify for the AFCON next year in Cameroon with 9 points while Mali and Guinea qualified from the group. I cannot express my delight. I feel so good and happy. My boys really work hard, Brave Warriors coach Bobby Samaria said after the match. Still on AFCON, despite having qualified already for the next edition of the AFCON Championship in Cameroon, Ghana's Black Stars beat Sao Tome and Principe 3-1 in their final Group C qualifier at the Accra Sports Stadium on Sunday. Ghana's manager Charles Kwabena Akunor made changes to the team that played against South Africa on Thursday by calling up captain Andre Ayew of Swansea, Crystal Palace's Jordan Ayew and Thomas Partey of Arsenal. Ghanaian left fullback Baba Rahman also scored his first goal as a Black Stars player and third for the team in the 60th minute to secure the three maximum points for the four-time African champions. Sao Tome and Principe pulled one back in the 82nd minute. The win puts Ghana at the top of Group C with 13 points ahead of Sudan and South Africa who finished the qualifiers with 12 and 9 points respectively. Sao Tome and Principe is at the bottom of the group with no point. Sudan thus qualifies alongside Ghana from Group C for Cameroon 2021. On to racing. Formula One's racing gods smiled on Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes in Sunday's Bahrain season opener, but round one of what promises to be a far bigger fight showed Red Bull's Max Verstappen will be hard to beat. Bold strategy and supreme racecraft won the day after Verstappen, who had led testing in every practice session, started from pole position with a faster car only to finish second. The 23-year-old Dutch driver would surely have won had he not gone off track while passing Hamilton on fresher tyres with four laps remaining and then been ordered to hand back the lead in a key moment of a nail-biting race. The victory by a margin of 0.7 of a second was Hamilton's record extending 96th and continued for a 15th successive season, his run of winning in every year he has competed in the sport. The 36-year-old won 11 of the 16 races he started last year, but the task already looks a lot harder. We will be back shortly after the sports roundup. That's all the news we had for you this evening. We thank you for tuning in. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share and click on the notifications bell. From Michelle Wells and the entire Nampa team, have a pleasant evening.